When do I embarrass you the most? All the time, actually. <laughs> um, there's not one time I can think that you haven't embarrassed me. That's not true. When you walk me to school, that's pretty embarrassing. I thought you liked me walking you to school. Yeah, but like, like three blocks away, you can drop me off and I'll walk and I'll walk. You still give me a kiss at the door. Yeah, but it's like, okay, you're my dad. I'll like, get out. Um, when you dance and you post it on Instagram, it's like I don't know who this old man is. Probably gonna throw out his back again somehow though. Why did you adopt me? Well, well, I never thought I'd be a dad. And growing up as um, a gay man, especially, you, know, you never think you're gonna have kids. And growing up as a kid that was in foster care and who eventually became, you know, was adopted, for me it was just a no-brainer. I knew I wanted to have kids even before I met, you know. So that was my goal. So um, it was just, it was in the cards for me. I didn't know how that was gonna happen, but the moment I got the opportunity, I ran for it. Do your best impression of me. Um. Oh, there's a lot. You yeah, there that. is so many. Um, Cyrus, why isn't this done? Why isn't that done? Clean your room, do the dishes. What happened at school today? Was there an argument? Oh, I heard you fell asleep in class. Oh. <laughs> so you need to get home and do your homework. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What is a talent or gift of mine that I'm not aware of? I don't think you are aware of how intelligent you are. I think because, like I said earlier, you're more like, oh, I can make a joke right now, or I can take a <laughs> note right now from the teacher. And you're typically gonna go for the joke because you get more accolades from your boys or you know, or the girls just, in class. Just say friends. You know, <laughs> your <laughs> friends, sorry. Um, I think if you concentrate and pay attention, you'll blow yourself away, you know. Um, it'll be an Alexander Hamilton moment, Li you know, you really will. You'll be like, whoa, okay, I, I'm actually, I get this, you don't have and to, I like it. You don't have to relate to that. Uh, but. No, I just, well, I'm just trying to make it something that you know, <laughs> we share. The, yeah. you know, so. What is our biggest misunderstanding, and what can we do about it? Our biggest misunderstanding? Yeah. This seventh grade year. Uh, it was just, I'm not going to curse, but it was just such a trash year. Like the fighting and everything like that, uh, the homework, uh, finding out who I am, I guess. I uh, feel like there was a bit of a misunderstanding there. Um, in, what, in what way? What do you mean? I feel that um, you understood what I was going through, but I just felt that you didn't understand. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? No. Like, um, you understood what was going on, you know, seventh grade, yeah. you know how hard it is. Uh, yeah. But I didn't feel that you understood. Okay. So I was like, every time you say, I completely understand, I would feel that you wouldn't because, you know, maybe there was a different instance for you than there was for me. So, yeah. Okay. So what can we do about that? Um, just listen, I guess. <laughs> cool. Okay. How are you raising me differently than how you were raised and why? Well, like I said earlier, you know that I, mean, I was adopted. I was in and out of foster care, you know, um, for the first three years. And I had this idyllic life in foster care, you know, with this great family. Then I went back to live with my birth family that was far <laughs> from, you know, special or it just wasn't a good place to be, you know. There was, we were always moving around. There was no, not always money or food or lighting. And I just saw from my birth family um, kind of where their values were and what, you know, their focus was, which wasn't on raising kids. They were fun people, you know, but not the best parents. So for me, I aim to be a great parent, like grandma and grandpa, you know. Um, I want you to feel comfortable. I want you, I want you and to feel you're loved and you're protected and you always have a place to call home and that you're getting the best education and you're able to travel and have new experiences, you know. And I didn't get those until I was a teenager when I was later adopted, you know. But I definitely, uh, I use my birth family's example as what not to follow. 
What do you think scares me most right now? Like about me or just the whole world in general? Just whatever, you know, whatever scares me the most. Um, I feel like it's every time I go outside. Like, like you're a lot less scared than what when he is because he's like, he has to go through a whole rant of what to do and what not to do. But you don't show it as much, but like deep down, like I kind of know like, oh my God, he, I just hope he makes the right choices. I hope he's safe around people uh, and yeah. How are you raising me differently than my sister? Oh, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> that is a good question. Um, this is something where I try not to like really differentiate between you and you know because um, you're both humans, you know, and that's why I try to you know approach it. Um, but I think for you, like I said, like I definitely have that. Like I, I have to protect you from the world, especially nowadays, being a young black kid, not necessarily looking 13, you know, yeah. and people's perceptions of who you are, what you are, what you, what they think of you, you know. And whereas your sister, I just have to protect her from boys. At this, at this point, you know, and then so, I'm, you know, um, other than that, I try to be pretty, you know, you can sweep the, sweep the kitchen or, you know, or cook or, you yeah. know, clean the bathrooms just like she can or just like I can, so. And I think because you have two dads, we don't have those traditional like mom dad roles or female male roles, you know. So we kind of uh, like, if it needs to get done, you need to do it. Yeah. You know? So, what's your biggest dream, and how can I help you achieve it? My biggest dream. Wow, I have a lot of dreams right now. Um, what's your biggest one? My biggest dream right now is. I'll just grow up. I get grow up uh, to be an adult. Graduate. Uh, wait, you graduate college, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I graduate college. Um, just have a stable life. You know. Um, I thought your biggest dream, that if I can interject, would be to play football. Yeah, that would. I just didn't want to say it because uh, okay, we, you, well, you, your said, dream. you said no discussion. You said I'm not <laughs> budging, so I said okay. But it's still your dream. You can yeah. dream to play football. You just, that doesn't make it better. That just <laughs> makes me more sad. It's just, oh, I'm sorry. Just showing that it's never gonna happen. Um, <laughs> um, just yeah, just a stable family that loves and cherishes me. Cool, perfect. What's the pain in me you wish you could heal? I think you want to meet your birth parents, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think you would like to know that, and I'm fine with that, you know, when it comes, if, if, if we can make that happen one day. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that, you know, you were, you were placed for adoption because your birth mother loved you, you know, yeah. and she wanted the best for you. So, um, but I don't think it's like this over, you're like depressed about it or anything. Yeah, yeah, I no. just think you'd like to like see her, see what she looks <laughs> like, you know? Introduce yourself to her, maybe make her laugh, you know, and um, and I don't know what if you have any questions for her, but uh, maybe that. But you're pretty easy going and pretty, you know, upbeat about most things. What's one experience you wish we will have together in the future? Wow. Um, the day I finally graduate high school or get out of college. Uh, because the day, actually no, the day I turned 16 actually, because then uh, I get a driver's license, and then you can get me a car. Yeah. Uh, what? I thought you were talking to another dad. No, I'm, ta I'm talking <laughs> to you. You don't need a car at 16. You don't know that. That's, that's, that's <laughs> and the And then the day I get out of college, mm -hmm. because where I came from, I, I don't remember, mm -hmm. but I know it would have been a bad place, and I know that you basically saved me from that situation. And, and but uh, you saved me from that situation and now basically um, it's like I'm a younger you now uh, didn't have a stable family uh, grew up uh, got adopted um, had a great family that loved and cherished them and and just made it through every single hard time that that could have brought them down but they never gave up Why do you love me? 
I love. I just love you. I just I just can't get enough of you. You're just my, I just love you. Every time I think about you, even when it's you know it's tenuous and just you know and difficult. You know we're going through something that you know it's not like so pleasant. I still you bring a smile to my face. I love everything about you. I love the kid you have grown into. I love again, like I said earlier, that you you actually can take time to reflect and and then kind of come. To your senses about things, you know, and um, I just love you. I just there's, I love you. <laughs> You've been a, a great child to raise and to parent, and I'm so happy to call you my son. And I'm happy to call you my dad. Cool. Thanks for watching. If you feel these videos are important or have an impact and you want to see more because we want to make more, we want to explore new stories and new relationships, support us on Patreon so we can keep bringing them and sharing them with you. Thank you very much.